Hey guys. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well. I've got Sonia trapped in the kitchen in a bikini. Which means she's gonna have to walk by. Um anyway, I just wanted to touch <laughs> yeah. Want to uh, touch base with you guys and just have a little chat, um, talk about a few different things. Um, thing number one uh, is of course recovery. So we're coming up to halfway through the challenge, um, which is good. And you guys have been doing really, really well. But it's typically around like halfway halfway through the challenge is when we need like a little a little pat on the shoulder and a little um, a little bit of motivation, right? And it's when people start to get a little bit dragged down. And it's when Burrito starts barking at the door because as soon as I do anything, he likes to drive me nuts. But um, anyway, um, I want to talk to you guys about uh, keeping motivated. And I also want to talk to you guys about a couple of ways because I know that at this point, like it's an intense workout program. I went today and I did um, chest and biceps. Isn't that what I did today, sweetie? Or was that last night? Oh, my God. I should know. I was there this morning. Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. I know. I know. Yeah, I did do chest this morning, chest and biceps this morning. So I'm doing the workouts with you guys, and um, they're not easy for me. And so if they're not easy for me, i got to assume that, uh, that some of you guys are probably thinking they're pretty intense. Um, but they're targeted, and they're good, and they're effective. So if I'm getting tired, I know that you guys are getting tired. And I just want to give you guys a couple of hints uh, and a couple of little things that are going to help you kind of uh, battle some of that fatigue. Um, number one, and I keep jamming this down your throat, is uh, make sure you guys are drinking your water, right? Uh, a lot of the time, even when you're when you're tired during the day, a glass of water goes a long way to rehydrating. I mean, it, we're, our bodies are composed of over 70% water with the organs being as much as like 90% water. Your brain needs water to survive. So your, your, your body needs water to flush out toxins, um, which includes lactic acid and it, it includes fat. So um, if you're not drinking four liters of water a day, make sure that you drink four liters of water a day at a minimum. It's really important, and I know it sounds like kind of silly, but I just have one of these things, and I, I carry it around with me everywhere, my little water buddy. Um, I also have a zero water thing where I'm just going to open some milk for Senya because I'm the man. Um, anyway, I have a zero water thing, which is uh, they're really, really effective, and they're really, really good for eliminating uh, any defects in water. So they're a little bit more expensive, but just a little water jug and I bring it around. It's got a little filter in it so you can fill up tap water or whatever else, but water is absolutely crucial. Uh, this is actually what it is right here. I really recommend that you guys get one of these things, zero water. It's got a little, it's like a Brita water, but it blows Brita out of the water. Or that, oh my God. I didn't do that on purpose. It's uh, significantly better than Brita. It's been shown to reduce concentrations uh, drastically. Um, if you, don't, if you haven't heard of these things, it's called Zero Water. Make sure you get the Zero Water. The water stops. Yeah, they're super handy. I carry it with me everywhere. And it's the kind of thing that you can even empty out. You can throw in your vehicle. And then if you're at work or you're wherever, you can just fill it up underneath the sink. And you know that you're getting some nice, healthy, clean water. So water is huge. Um, a lot of you guys are using BC. I'm not giving that back. This is like in the kitchen, right? So you can, the so you can hand me stuff in the fridge. <laughs> um, make sure you're drinking your water. Crucial. Um, as well as um, branch chain amino acids, I've talked to you guys about a little bit. Um, some of you guys are currently using them. I use them religiously. Um, I've gone over this before. This is the Soda Series BCAA Supreme Cola. Um, I typically don't buy cola. I typically buy something fruitier, but um, one little scoop of that inside of your uh, shaker when you go work out, as well as you know if you have the opportunity first thing in the morning, last thing at night, it's going to speed up your recovery. Uh, branch chain amino acids are the building block of protein. Protein is the building block of muscle. When I consume these during my workout, lots of science out there that debates the efficiency of these things. Um, and maybe it's a placebo effect, which are, I'm not going to lie to you. A lot of supplements are a placebo effect. Um, but I do find I get a better, a better pump and I find I get a lot more energy. Uh, sleep is crucial. Sleep is crucial. I actually just got off of a call with uh, one of the boys and um, they're dealing with a, a youngster who's who's super young. Um, there's a lot of things that are going to interrupt your, your sleeping patterns and sometimes it's unavoidable and sometimes it's a joy like a, like a child, right? Uh, but you got to make sure you're getting your sleep in or at least sleeping as well as you possibly can. Sleep is absolutely crucial. Senya and I are both kind of workaholics um, but I make sure that I get at least seven or, hours, seven or eight hours of sleep every night because I know that if I 
I locate those seven or eight hours of sleep every night. I'm going to be more efficient in my everyday life. I'm going to be more efficient in my business. And the time that I'm awake, I am more energized and, uh, and a little bit more engaged with what I'm doing. So I tend to get a little bit more done. Um, static stretching as well, guys. When you're sore, your joints are sore, as I kind of spoke about. At the end of every workout, or at least when you get home, you guys should be taking the time to stretch. And um, stretching is, is really, really good for... Um, increasing your recovery uh, and your, your muscle soreness overall. So make sure that you guys are stretching. Make sure that you're eating your meals, right? Um, the one thing that people tend to have misinformation on in the industry is that if I eat less, if I don't eat all my meals, um, I'm not going to put, I'm going to lose weight quicker. And it's just not really true from what we know. From what we know, by running a serious calorie deficit, it's okay to run a calorie deficit, but if you run a substantial calorie deficit, it's gonna spike your cortisol levels, right. the stress hormone. Woo woo! <laughs> it's gonna spike your stress hormone. And if your stress hormone spikes, it does a ton of weird things, such as stores body fat, it can cannibalize muscle, um, and do a ton of other things and run a ton of other havoc on your system. So uh, you do wanna run a deficit, and you do wanna run a calorie deficit, but skipping meals, isn't necessarily going to get the weight off any faster. It may actually have a detrimental effect. So all of your programming I've kind of done with the thought that you're going to be having your one cheat meal a week and um, the amount of calories that I've assigned you, it's really important that you run by that and you stay consistent. You may weigh and measure your food and all that kind of stuff too. I'm also, this is kind of weird, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so I'm just going to be open with you guys. I don't really care. Uh, Anti-hero fitness is so much more than, at least to me anyway, than just getting biceps and getting huge and getting big. It's it's about improvement in every facet of your life. And it's about using fitness as a vehicle to motivate you to be able to make other improvements in your life. Um, one of the improvements that I'm having in my life is um, I'm currently, it's kind of weird to say, I don't, but whatever, I'm going to lay it down here. Um, I'm currently undergoing th therapy, which is uh, whoop, whoop, which is fine because um, because as much as you want to be a physical specimen, it's important to have your mind in check. And one of the things I'm not I'm not telling you this like Matt's crazy, whatever. But I, I do want to be open and I do want to be honest with you. You know, I, as much as I seek improvement in the physicality aspect of things, and and I want to build that perfect body and I want to look good and I want to feel good about myself so I can be a true version of myself. I also want to be a better person. I want to understand the reason why we act certain ways. I want to have a better control of who I am as a person and then be able to respond properly to adversity in my life. So as a result of that, I am currently undergoing therapy. Um, I'm not just telling you that. So I'm like, Hey, I'm crazy. Your trainer's nuts. Uh, I want to just, just share something with you guys, which I found really, really interesting. And I'll post an article about it later on. And, um, I'm big, I've always kind of been into meditation and that kind of thing. And the effects are well documented on what meditation can do for you. And I've actually, my, the person I'm speaking with right now is actually teaching me a lot about meditation, cer certain meditative techniques. Um, and we're talking about being tired and being exhausted here. One of the things that we've talked about, this is going to get kind of weird, but uh, it's pretty typical. One of the things that we're actually talking about is that when you're learning how to breathe, we actually, we, we breathe... <laughs> differently. Hi, burrito. Burrito's mad. We breathe differently from the time that we are born to a certain time in our development. And then we start, we, we stop using our diaphragm. So there's actually a way that you can oxygenate your brain, oxygenate your blood, and actually wake yourself up. And it's called diaphragm breathing. So typically speaking, when we're young, we do this, but then we get older and we start breathing improperly. I know this sounds crazy, um, but I am going to post some research to back this up. We start breathing as we're, as we are breathing in, our stomach is coming in. And then as we breathe out, our stomach goes out. But the truth of the matter is, is that we're, when we're very young and when we're developing, we breathe differently. And the way that we breathe is called diaphragm breathing. So as we start to breathe in, it's actually the opposite of what a lot of us are doing right now. Our stomach actually starts to go out. So I'm breathing in, and then as I breathe out, my stomach comes back in. So um, the difference between the regular types of breathing, and I'm actually going somewhere with this, so bear with me. I know that sounds crazy, but um, 
because we start breathing differently and we start uh, we stop using our diaphragm to breathe, um, we tend to get into shallower breaths. So it's more of a but if you can actually learn, relearn how to use your diaphragm to breathe, five short breaths reoxygenates your entire system. It wakes you up. It's also very calming. And um, it's a technique that a lot of people use to not only calm themselves down, but to also wake themselves up and to give themselves a little bit more of alertfulness. It's something that I do um, quite often. I just take five breaths like this. So as I start to, well, it's kind of weird to explain. Um, but if I'm, you know, if I'm at the gym, if I'm tired, if I'm about to go to the gym, I take some time to degas and I take some time to focus on my workout. And as I do that, I'm using my diaphragm breathing. And what that does is it pulls a bunch of excess oxygen into your system and actually oxygenates your brain at a rate that's substantially higher than the way that we traditionally breathe. Um, so it is called diaphragm breathing. So I'll simply, I know it sounds insane, but I simply... I breathe in, I fill my diaphragm up, I hold it for two seconds. Now, as you're breathing out, that process should take uh, approximately three times longer than the amount of time that it takes to breathe in. You're going to do that five times. So you're going to breathe, breathe in, and as you're breathing in, you're squeezing your stomach out, you're filling your air up, your stomach up with air. You're going to do that five times, and then. What you'll actually find is that you're more awake, you're more alert, and you're ready to go. It's just a little technique um, that, I, that I am using as part of a lot of the meditation stuff that I've been doing lately, um, and that I think that you guys might find effective. I was really a little bit skeptical when I first started doing it, um, but I noticed that when I take the time to do my five breaths, if I'm tired, if I'm stressed out, if I'm having a bad day, um, if I've got to focus, if I need to go to the gym, those five breaths are absolutely night and day in between um, accomplishing my goals and calming myself down and putting myself into a good head state um, versus uh, just kind of going in and, and doing it as is. We learn to breathe improperly. I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds insane, but I'm going to post a couple of articles talking about diaphragm breathing and some of the benefits after this. So that's something you can do to kind of wake yourself up. As well, guys, um, as I mentioned before, get yourself a good multivitamin. Um, not affiliated with all max, but quite a stack. I'm a huge fan. Um, when you're pushing yourself really hard at the gym, you need nutrients and a lot of the stuff in here, this thing literally has everything from, um, you know, from tissue support to brain support to everything else. Um, stretching is really important. Drinking your water, make sure you're not missing meals. Um, and just enjoy the process, right? Have that idea of who you want to become, have the idea of where you want to go. Focus on that. Know that in the back of your mind and you'll get there. Um, you know, and that's that's something that I apply to my life too. I'm not going to get all preachy preachy. I know the, the diaphragm breathing is probably um, like, what are you doing, Matt? You're supposed to be showing us how to get in shape. But um, for me, the pursuit of, I won't say excellence, but the pursuit of a better me encompasses so much more than fitness. And I think that it's really important that um, when you're striving for self-improvement, that you're not just focusing on how big your biceps are, but you're also focusing on how good your family life is, what kind of a mental state that you're in, and the way that you're treating yourself, because ultimately that'll reflect on the way that you treat others. So, um, go kill your workouts, have some fun with it. We got three weeks left, guys. Um, right now we're at that halfway point, and a lot of you guys have made some monumental changes, and a lot of you guys are on your way to making monumental changes. And nobody's journey is the same, right? Everything at your own pace. So I just wanted to leave this video. I'll drop something tomorrow a little bit more fitnessy. I'm going to drop uh, in the comments here something on diaphragm breathing. Honestly, it takes five simple breaths, maybe a minute and a half. Reoxygenate your blood. Um, calm yourself down. Get a little bit more focus. Feel a little bit better about yourself. And uh, go and crush your workout. So I'll leave that for you guys to take a look at. And I will post another video soon. Love seeing all your posts in the group. I'm going to go for workout number two here in a couple of hours. I'll post some videos from that as well. I hope everybody's having an awesome time. I hope you're enjoying the program. If you need absolutely anything at all, drop me a line. And I promise to get back to you uh, within the next couple hours. Okay? I'll see you guys soon. Have a good night. Bye.